for today uh, i have prepared uh, uh, how should i say uh, a short uh, presentation regarding uh, budapest uh, uh, large housing estates and maybe at the beginning i will give you a short overview uh, about the historical features but first uh, i try to manage my uh, <laughs> my screen sorry i am not so familiar with the zoom i would like to put okay can i close somehow this uh, table no. okay do you see my full screen Yes, we see your full screen with the name special and functional transformation. So first okay. picture of your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Try go to the next picture. And just just mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we are in Budapest, as you know, the Hungarian capital city. Here you can see some some numbers uh, regarding to the population. And uh, it's a common feature in post-socialist countries that most of the cities uh, are in shrinking uh, position. Uh, also the capital cities, the agglomeration is growing, we can say that, but here you can see that uh, at the uh, 80s, it was more than uh, 10 million inhabitants in Hungary. And now there is, uh, uh, we, we we have lots uh, population and also in Budapest uh, the demographical changes it's mainly uh, toward the shrinking uh, uh, position Budapest uh, it's a very uh, specific uh, I can say or typical European cities divided uh, by the Danube uh, into two uh, different parts historical parts but uh, the city uh, was unified at the end of the 19th century. So uh, since uh, we try to develop uh, Budapest uh, and the whole city on the both sides of the Danube River. My presentation will focus on the large housing estates. So for this topic, uh, maybe it's important to see at the beginning the the housing developments in numbers or in 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 trends and uh, as you can see here uh, after the second world war the situation changed hungary had a huge need uh, in housing and uh, following the soviet uh, uh, requirements and, and guidelines uh, from the 60s uh, till the uh, till uh, the change of the political and economic regime in 1990 uh, Hungary produced a lot of uh, prefabricated uh, new modern uh, flats uh, mainly in uh, housing estates if I as in every uh, post-socialist countries, uh, if I to divide the, the, the 20th century history, uh, I have to name uh, see different periods. The first one is uh, till the end of the Second World War. Then uh, we lived uh, in a state socialist uh, country during 40 years. And uh, since uh, after the transition period, we arrived uh, to a so-called post-socialist capitalism with market-based uh, uh, real estate and uh, housing developments. In the second half of the 20th century, the architectural style, uh, di dimension of the dwelling units, uh, the inner and the exterior organization uh, of the of the neighborhoods changed a lot uh, the first period uh, it was the socialist realism uh, it was an obligation to use this uh, soviet type uh, uh, architectural and urban uh, solutions uh, till uh, the death of stalin then uh, we had a really short uh, 
experimental modern period with really uh, important and good examples uh, searching new solutions uh, related to the technological solutions or the form or the social uh, questions in uh, mass housing neighborhoods. But then uh, it was a really um, strong uh, mass housing uh, construction period uh, based uh, on the prefabrication, industrialization, state involvement, and, uh, and every typical thing uh, in, in uh, uh, these state uh, socialist countries. And uh, in the late period, in the 80s, uh, some housing estates uh, uh, were designed uh, following the postmodern uh, ideas, but uh, still using prefabrication, the big panels. Uh, but in the urban form, uh, it was somehow the uh, rediscovery of the historical urban uh, fabric with this. Uh, um, inner courtyard, uh, urban blocks, uh, and uh, the street network uh, reappeared. Other important thing uh, to check uh, the, the dimension of the housing estates, uh, because uh, it's different in every country. And we can say that in Hungary, uh, the housing estates uh, are not so huge that in Russia, for example, uh, or the former uh, Soviet uh, Soviet countries. Here you can see that uh, most of the housing estate was just a small uh, unit, we can say that, uh, with less than uh, 1,000 uh, dwelling units. So the smaller housing estates uh, could be uh, well integrated in the existing urban fabric. But uh, evidently, uh, Hungary realized uh, also some uh, bigger estates. Uh, and in Budapest, we can say that today uh, we have uh, 13 uh, so-called large housing estates with more than uh, uh, 6,000 dwelling units. Comparing with uh, with Soviet type uh, housing estate, uh, they are not so big, uh, not so large, but uh, in our country, uh, they are the biggest uh, uh, interventions made uh, uh, that time. On this slide, uh, you can see the the position of the large housing estate within Budapest. And uh, I differentiated with these two colors uh, the, the origins uh, of these uh, estates. Because uh, some of them, the blue ones, uh, were created on uh, underused or not developed, not urbanized area within the city. And as you can see, all of them is somehow around the historic city center because Budapest city center uh, it's located on the both side of the Danube with the castle zone on Buda side and the uh, past uh, uh, historic urban core, you can say tourist historic city center. And uh, fortunately, during the state socialism, they neglected, neglected uh, this area uh, and the industrialization and the development of the housing estate uh, were the main objectives, but uh, they tried to uh, reuse uh, non-urbanized lands around the city center. So here you can see this first circle. We can say that with the first uh, huge housing estates, Skellenfeld or Josef Attila housing estates or Zuglo. Uh, and all of them uh, were created on formal agricultural uh, land or former green areas. But then uh, to demonstrate uh, somehow the power of the, of the state, uh, they decided to destroy uh, some historical city center. You can see with the red colors 
that uh, on these zones, we had uh, formal smaller cities uh, with their historic uh, city center, and they destroyed them and replaced uh, by modern uh, housing developments. This one uh, is Obuda, uh, where uh, we had uh, ruins from the antiquity. So this is really a historic part of the city. And finally, they demolished uh, most of the buildings in the city centers. And today we can see this very strong contrast uh, with some remaining uh, historical legacy and this uh, new construction from the 60s and 70s. Uh, similar case in Újpest or Kispest, Pesterzsébe, Csepel. And uh, after this uh, short introduction, I would like to focus on the actual uh, transformations and mainly uh, the policy beyond uh, these uh, this, uh, interventions. And uh, I uh, will present examples from the 20th century, from the 21st uh, century, because uh, after the change of the regime in 1990, uh, it was, uh, we can say 10 years, uh, like a transition period. Uh, and uh, at the beginning of this period, they privatized everything. So the housing stock uh, became uh, absolutely private, privately owned. And uh, it was no uh, special program for revitalization, for rehabilitation. Uh, they have decided just to sell uh, to the owners, to the, to the residents, uh, with all the problem of these uh, inherited buildings. And uh, the first uh, huge national program, so-called uh, Panel Program, started in 2001, uh, focusing on the technical renovation of the residential uh, building stock. And it was an open program everywhere in Hungary. And we can say that till today, approximately uh, one quarter of the panel housing stock uh, used uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, subvention, this fund, uh, to renovate uh, the exterior of the facades. As uh, you can see on this figure, if uh, the original facade, it was a, a very typical uh, repetitive uh, uh, design from the 60s, uh, they just made the exterior insulation and uh, changed the, the color of the facade without working on the ground floor area, without working on the top floor, without working and changing anything in the staircase uh, or in the interior of the building. So it, like a cosmetical uh, uh, intervention and evidently they have some effects uh, on the energetical uh, uh, questions related to the dwellings. In some other cases, uh, for example, here in Paksha, in a smaller city in Hungary, it was a very uh, interesting uh, details from the 70s with some uh, tulip motifs. And after this uh, technical renovation, they uh, covered everything. We cannot discover anymore the original uh, uh, experiment uh, made by the architects. Hungary entered uh, into the European Union in 2004, and it was the opening of some European programs uh, helping uh, integrated uh, rehabilitation uh, process. I think it's really important because uh, in this general program, in this national program, it's just a technical intervention uh, on the huge surfaces, uh, like uh, helping the, the industry beyond the, 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 the construction needs. 
but uh, the European programs uh, were always uh, much more complete and complex, saying that the technical renovation should work always uh, with uh, some public building or open space uh, uh, renewal. And uh, uh, it was important to, to create some social uh, programs uh, helping uh, the real changes uh, within a housing estates. It's one of my favorite examples because uh, it's in Uipalota large housing estate when uh, uh, they renew some uh, some uh, socialist modernist buildings uh, like the health center or the market or uh, some schools uh, and cultural facilities within the city center so it's not the typical things in hungary uh, also in budapest uh, it was only two large housing estate uh, having uh, this uh, this uh, european program uh, integrated social rehabilitation program. It's important because that time, at the beginning of the 2000s, uh, municipality applied uh, for the European Union. And in Budapest, uh, Uipalota and Havana housing estates uh, were the most stigmatized uh, regarding their social composition, their social position. Uh, and the shrink, shrinkage, uh, it was also it it was uh, really relevant. For example, in Uipalota, approximately sixty percent of the inhabitants uh, uh, live there, uh, comparing the situation uh, with the with the eighties. In this lecture, I just uh, touched some, some topics, uh, but if you are interested more, you can find uh, some, I hope, uh, better written uh, uh, articles uh, regarding to these topics. For example, this one, it's about Uipalota case study, uh, speaking uh, on the participatory uh, um, transformation of the housing estate, the success uh, and the problems uh, of this process, uh, the appropriation and the different type of participation in, uh, introduced uh, into this, uh, into this uh, uh, renewal process. Or the Havana housing estate, uh, its municipality it was really active in different European programs. And uh, 10 years ago, I have worked uh, with them uh, in an urbect uh, uh, project, uh, and uh, it was really uh, interesting to discover different European examples, compare them, and introduced Havana as a Hungarian case study into this uh, international context. So after national programs, uh, European programs. I have to mention the, the third uh, option, and this is the private intervention. It's a big issue uh, because in Hungary, it's not a typical thing because we have, a, we can say, a, a calm cities without densification, without uh, intensification. Uh, most of the developments uh, focus uh, on the historic city centers or the sites uh, uh, very well located somewhere in a natural uh, 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 part of the city, a more natural part of the city. So most of the housing estates are, uh, I can say, abandoned and uh, people live just a normal everyday life uh, in this uh, in these areas but here in Kalanford the situation is different and this is the only uh, i can say the only large housing estate with significant uh, private uh, interventions but uh, it's because uh, of the position of the housing estates not far from the city center not far from the danube and uh, having just a new metro line, the Metro 4, uh, 
with a very good connection to the to the guards uh, and to the city centers. So first, uh, they made a lot of uh, public developments, mainly in uh, urban infrastructure. And then the private investors arrived uh, into the housing estate and uh, they developed the residential buildings. Uh, here you can see the formal uh, panel buildings and some new construction within the housing estates. Uh, they realized the biggest uh, shopping uh, mall of Budapest uh, in this area uh, and a huge uh, uh, green park uh, is renewed uh, in the middle of this housing estate. So it's not a typical story. This story was analyzed uh, by uh, one of my doctoral students. You know him. Some of you know him, uh, Filip Antipenko. Uh, in a journal, so if you are interested in this uh, uh, transformation process, uh, you can check this uh, article on the net. And uh, now I would like uh, to share you uh, these best examples, best practice, I think. It was a program initiated uh, by the municipality of Budapest so-called terkes, so to do something uh, in the space, uh, in the urban space, uh, it means. And it was a program uh, based uh, on an operational model uh, and the cooperation between the different actors. Uh, it wasn't a huge budget, but uh, it was just uh, money to motivate uh, local people uh, uh, some private investors, uh, the local municipality, uh, to work together with the municipality of Budapest uh, and to do uh, some small, we can say urban acupuncture or small intervention uh, within housing estates and uh, within other part of the city. It was a program uh, that started in uh, 13, and unfortunately, uh, the last uh, uh, year it was uh, before COVID, when they used this uh, this uh, this competition system. So here you can see the the map uh, showing the different uh, sites uh, of intervention using this uh, this uh, fund uh, provided by the municipality of Budapest. And uh, some numbers uh, show the success uh, of this uh, of this uh, process uh, because most of these interventions focused uh, on the public space, uh, the renewal of the public space, and the renewal of the communal uh, buildings and community spaces uh, within the city. Budapest uh, officially divided into uh, 23 districts uh, and they function as independent cities. Here you can see the list uh, of the project uh, and I put uh, the circle on the districts uh, uh, having uh, large housing estates. And uh, I show you some examples how they use uh, this uh, this process. That's what are the results. Uh, a typical intervention that uh, in a housing estate, uh, uh, the open spaces in Hungary uh, remain uh, publicly owned. So it's important that it's absolutely publicly owned. So we need public money to do something uh, with this uh, with these areas. And uh, for example, in this uh, large housing estate, they decided uh, to renew the main axis, uh, focusing on public facilities, the entrance zones, and giving some 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 new uh, uh, urban uh, arch micro architecture elements uh, for this uh, low middle class uh, housing estate uh, somewhere in Budapest. Another district, uh, Chapel, 
uh, it's a worker district of Budapest uh, before it was the, the biggest industrial area uh, of the city. And also, actually, more than uh, two thirds of the population live uh, live in uh, in uh, panel buildings in this uh, in this area. And there, it's not the housing estate uh, that uh, was renewed, but uh, the public zones, uh, mainly the park uh, along the Danube branch uh, that we can find here. But immediately, this changes that the district uh, had a new public zone and green zone along the river. Uh, it made a big change uh, on the on the livability and likability uh, of this area. Some photos on these sites. And another one, Bekas Megyer on the north part, uh, you can see that it's one of the, the important large housing estate, very well located, not far from the Danube. And here uh, they combined uh, different programs, uh, program of the Budapest uh, and the municipality forced uh, the realization of new food markets, food market uh, within the housing estate. And uh, the Terkes project uh, focused uh, on the renewal of the urban space, uh, just uh, the space between buildings, uh, between residential buildings. But next to this uh, uh, intervention and project, uh, they realized uh, a new uh, market hall with uh, public space, uh, that ne existed, never existed before. Uh, here we can find a huge uh, transport hub, and this is the entrance zone uh, to where the housing estate. And it was absolutely renewed. They changed the, the inner and spatial organization of the housing estate as well. And nowadays, uh, this is a central zone. Uh, make the feeling that uh, that uh, there is a good future uh, to leave this area. And uh, some months ago, they uh, inaugurated, opened uh, renewal of a green zone along the Danube as well. Some photos showing the, the architectural intervention. And here you can see the, the division of the budget that uh, the construction of the new food market, it was a national program. So it was financed mainly by the state and uh, Budapest uh, also participated in the, in the, in the realization process. <coughs> and in this area, we can say that former buildings uh, live together with this new one and uh, the public zones, uh, the pavement and the microarchitecture it's also changed a lot, uh, giving a new character uh, to this uh, to this area. <clears throat> it's before the opening. <clears throat> and now uh, I return uh, to the Havana housing estate as uh, last examples, because if you remember, it was uh, one of the case uh, uh, study um having a, a european uh, fund uh, for integrated social renewal and it's really interesting and uh, strange and sad uh, to recognize uh, that uh, for example the market price uh, of the flats uh, didn't change anymore uh, after a huge uh, intervention financed by the by the union so the, the technical renovation didn't change the, the position of the housing estate in the market. But uh, this smaller uh, change made uh, by the help of this program of Budapest, uh, it's more um, relevant, I can say that. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, it was a stigmatized area, just uh, 
uh, in the middle of the DTH house uh, land uh, of the outskirt of Budapest. It's an isolated, uh, I can say, closed uh, zone with huge uh, slabs uh, uh, forming really brutalist uh, lines uh, uh, within the landscape, within the urban uh, landscape. And uh, by the European program, uh, they made uh, uh, several technical renovation, uh, some new shops uh, and, and uh, public facilities uh, were also uh, renovated. But uh, with Budapest program, they created a new uh, open space market uh, using uh, parking uh, area at the edge of the housing estate. It's important to mention that uh, this zone, it's always function as a market, it's an open market on every Saturday uh, morning, uh, but without uh, any uh, building or any technical installation. And here it was a uh, first uh, uh, competition prepared uh, by the local municipality and by uh, local people and by uh, a small architectural firm proposing this uh, this uh, uh, colorful uh, colorful uh, uh, pavement system uh, with a new uh, market building and uh, this is the solution. This project received uh, several architectural uh, prizes in Hungary. It's, it wasn't a huge budget, uh, but it's really uh, a new area uh, that uh, inhabitants and, uh, and uh, users of this uh, district uh, uh, like very much. So, I think it's important that uh, in this uh, project, uh, the cooperation between the partners and uh, good and simple urban and architectural uh, project uh, was realized. So to summarize here, you can see that in Békás Megyer, that in Havana, they created uh, this market. So this one, it was a big uh, uh, building with, uh, with a uh, bigger budget. Havana, it's uh, like, a, like a small intervention, we can say that. And uh, fortunately, uh, on several large housing estates, they use this uh, Terkoz uh, chance this Terkus competition system to make uh, some important uh, uh, changes within the estates. And uh, as you know, urban acupuncture we use uh, for this type of intervention when we try to make some minimal uh, physical intervention to activate uh, local uh, community uh, and to um, have a maximal uh, social and economic uh, effect uh, on the site. So I think that this is a good way uh, to, to uh, motivate uh, local people and, uh, and uh, realize uh, not just on one area, but uh, on several sites uh, interventions uh, within the city. If uh, you are interested more, uh, on our website, you can find uh, several research articles or a project made with students uh, or uh, some result of international corporations. Uh, so visit this website. We have to update a little bit, but uh, uh, it's, I think it's an interesting, interesting collection if you are focusing on this uh, mass housing issue.